Welcome back to the dopest show you won't get sick of. I'm Spencer. This is Sasha. I spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but I've been off heroin since April 9th, 2010. I've got a lot of stories about the stupid stuff I did to get put in prison. I've also got a whole lot of stories about the crazy stuff that happened while I was in prison. And God forbid you end up in prison, want to make some of the same mistakes I made. So, today, got two for one in this one. A run-in I had with the uh, shot collar of the Bloods. And another run-in somebody else had. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of background. The Bloods at Petersburg in general. The shot collar there... We're going to call him Big Cam. That's not his name, but that's what we're going to call him. They called him Big Something, but I'm not going to say his name, just out of privacy for him. He is a giant man. Six foot four to six foot five, I would say. Probably about 300 to 320 pounds. Giant man. A lot of extra weight on him, but just in general, just one of those people that's just built bigger. Like, just bigger bone structure. Uh, dreads went about halfway down his back. He had a grill. There was there was a unique thing that I saw at Petersburg that I'd never seen before, and it was people with grills. See, they, they're supposed to take that, but sometimes people get their teeth, they get caps put on them so the guards don't know the difference. Well, people would have grills, and something that was odd was in receiving, people would buy other people's grills, something that being stuck in somebody's mouth. They buy it from them, and then they'd start wearing it as their own. Uh, Big Cam, he was one of the people who did that. There was also a fat white guy who went by Junebug that did it too. Uh, <laughs> and it was a crooked set of teeth that Junebug wore, which made it even more weird, you know, wearing a crooked set of teeth that don't belong to you. But anyway, I wouldn't even know that they weren't his real teeth, to be honest, though, if he hadn't gotten pissed drunk and... They fell out of his mouth one time. But anyway, so basically, he's the leader of the Bloods. How the Bloods work at Petersburg, you know, they're their own group, their own association. This particular guy, Big Cam, that we're talking about, he was at USP McCrary, which is a pretty serious USP. It's also where Satan, my uh, buddy who was in the Aryan Brotherhood, he was also in USP McCrary. And before anybody says anything, you know, for anybody new, me saying I was friends with somebody in the Aryan Brotherhood, uh, back then, my ex, who I affectionately refer to as a no good, down dirty, awful hussy, was black. And, you know, he didn't have any problem with that. It was usually the independent white people, the little flunkies of this little group they called the haters, that were the ones that act like they had an issue about something like that. But anyway, Big Cam, he had a manslaughter charge. Um, he had uh, pop, pop, certain words I can use and certain words I cannot use. Uh, I believe it was his own uncle, not blood uncle, but like married in uncle. Something about he claimed that they had done something to a kid that was related to him. There was some sort of an issue. I believe, it, if I'm remembering correctly, I believe he did 10 years on a um, manslaughter charge for that. And I'm not quite sure what he was doing the Fed time for. He was doing 10 or 15. He actually, I believe he went home. For, yeah, he did go home. Matter of fact, he did go home. I remember it now because there was a guy who took his place as the shot caller. When one goes who's the leader, another person has to step up and fill in. And seeing as how he had a body to his name, that's something that gives people status, okay? You've got a body to your name on the street. Yeah, people, that makes you have, like, higher rank, I guess, or whatever, which is kind of silly because anybody can, you know, pull their finger up. And, you know, it's there was some speculation about some of the stuff he said about it. It's hard to tell what really happened with that. But anyway, uh, according to Satan, who had been with him at USP McCrary, he acted completely different at Petersburg, like more childish, I would say. But he wasn't. He was like a big kid, to be honest with you. He cut up a whole lot, um, and you know, they, the Bloods. Just another little bit about them. They had their own tables. There, it's not like you've heard about. You know, like guys like Jay Williams, who was in the Virginia state system. It sounds like Bloods just are completely overrun the system. Like they run pretty much compounds there. That's that's not at all how it was 
you know, in Petersburg in the federal system and at various other places that I've heard. I mean, I'm sure there's a place or two, but there are so many people in the federal system from all over the country, okay? I believe he was from, Big Cam was from like South Carolina or somewhere like that. It's rare that you end up in the state that you get charged in in the federal system. We had guys from California, Texas, even Alaska. So, it, it really the amigos, the, the Mexicans, they, they were the ones with the numbers, the Pisces, which is a gang for Mexicans, not in a gang, but anyway, anyhow. Um, I was known as karate MMA guy, you know. At the medium, I didn't have as much of a reputation for that. I just kept quiet. I wanted to get back to the low. The medium sucked, okay? Everything about it sucked. It was full of weirdos for the first, that's the number one thing. 40% uh, so sex offenders, the worst of the worst in the country. And just for people who haven't watched, we don't have SNY or protection yard. Like, half the people there are people that are local. that end up there because it's close to home. And then half the people, 40%, or uh, chomos, and then sometimes when people get beat up, they get sent to Petersburg too. The former shot caller for Lone Pock Medium. I mean, you watch Sons of Anarchy. They've got people in Lone Pock Prison there, which they're portraying. So that's a serious medium. Uh, the former shot caller there ended up at Petersburg not by doing anything wrong or dirty. There was a Mexican Mafia guy that showed up, decided he wasn't paying enough taxes. He got jumped off the yard. They sent him out to Petersburg, you know. Um, so there are people like that that end up there too. But anyway, Big Cam, I was known as training a little bit. Like, you know, people knew about it. I'd get the people in the leather shop, Kevin Crockett, Casey, a friend of mine who, uh, once I get off this federal probation, which I technically should be off, it's been five years, but I haven't gotten the green light. Uh, I can start talking to my friends again, you know, uh, just following all the rules down to a T. Um, explain more on that once it's all done. But um, he would make me mitts, mitts that are better than any mitt you can buy in any store, made with better quality leather. They have a leather shop, you know, if you have to pay with your own money to buy the leathers, and he could do stuff that you would not believe. And he made these mitts. So, you know, me and a couple people uh, would hit the mitts, trade off, and you had to be careful because that's a serious punishment, which you could end up in the hole for a whole month, end up in solitary confinement for a month, and they take your phone or computer for six months, you know, or commissary for six months if you get caught with that. I got caught in the drug program hitting the mitts one time. About scared this woman, CO to death. She about fell over because she came through right when I popped a left hook, and it had a crisp, like, it sounded like, boom, like, pop. And it, and about, yeah, but I got in trouble and I had to do little drug program punishment things. But anyway, I was known for doing that. And one day we got in a conversation about something of the sort, and I was talking about trying to explain it. And he's telling me, show him. And I told him, come and see, I'll show you. And uh, I showed him a couple things, and then I don't know what possessed me to do it. I'm, I'm, I joke around, I play around a whole lot. Uh, as tall as he is, you know, there's something. It was a, it's a clinch, Muay Thai clinch, where you got both hands behind the head and you pull down and tell you throw knees. Well, I grab, I just all of a sudden snatched his head and pretend like I was going to throw a knee. He cocked his arm, swung. I put my head on his chest and both arms around him. I said, whoa, 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 buddy, whoa, whoa, whoa. And just something I've seen, whenever you're in a serious situation, you know, where somebody reacts like that, if you laugh and, you know, you laugh it off, it de-escalates them back down and they go from that aggressive bed. I had crossed the line. I played with somebody who's not to be played with. And his instinctive reaction was to try to blast me right there. Luckily, I was able to clinch up, get my arms around, and just, you know, like laugh. Basically, my, if my head's on his chest, he can't land an effective punch. I mean, the most thing you can do is this, and that's not going to do anything to anybody. Um, and we laughed, and I, and I stepped away. I said, whoa, whoa, my bad man. I said, what's, what, what's going on? He said, Man, he says, it's instinct, man. He says, I've been in places where, you know, it's just, he said, it's built in me. And I said, dude, I'm so sorry. I said, I, t I won't do that again. I apologize. I said, We're good. He's like, yeah, man. He said, my bad. I, I wasn't trying to do that. I dodged a big one there, okay? This is the shot collar for the entire bloods there, okay? This could have been a serious issue. Um, you know, it's hard to tell. I didn't have as much training as I have now. Uh, I had enough to get in there and clinch a hold of him and everything, but that's a huge man, you know. It's it's hard to tell what would have, what would have happened with that, but it was able to de-escalate. There was no winning to it. If if it had gone down and he whooped me, well, then I was whooped, and it depended on if he wanted to keep it being an issue. 
if somehow I'd, I'd gotten a hold of him and put him to sleep, you know, got him in a choke or something, um, then I'd have had a mark on me and it would have followed me from facility to facility. Luckily, clinching, put my head right on his chest and grabbing both arms, kind of had my feet perpendicular to his and just like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> and I laughed like loud, annoyingly hard so he'd know, whoa, we're good, we're good. I was just playing, my bad, man. But even now just talking about it, like, I'm like, yeah, that, that could have been terribly bad. That could have been something that followed me place to place and I could have had a, a little name in the hat for, you know, somebody to come get me. There was no win in that situation that I almost accidentally put myself in. You do not play with people, certain people in there, and he is one who I believe had that instinct put in him. So something else just randomly about the Bloods at Petersburg. Uh, they had their tables. There was there was a good handful of them. They had like two or th I think they had two they had two maybe three tables because I sat in the area it was pretty much just the independent people uh, the Muslims lined the one side see and you go in the kitchen they have one row the first row on the on the right hand side they called that Tromo row the weirdest of the weird would all sit in that row because it was close to staff and they knew oh they can protect us here and then on the opposite side the whole row was uh, Muslims and then right at the top, you know, towards the door, there were two tables. There might have been a third that I don't know about that was Bloods. Natives were through the middle. Everybody has their little piece. But the independents were pretty much beside the uh, Muslims, and the Bloods, like, went down that row. So oftentimes I sat at the table that was just one table away from them. And an interesting fact was there was a fella there at Petersburg, white guy, about six foot, 200 pounds, had gold teeth, and, um, he was really about making money. He had these like prescription glasses that were real expensive, but like they looked like sunglasses, like fancy sunglasses, like high high dollar. And he was about getting money. He was about getting money. He made more money than I would say any one of them did independently. And he did his own thing. And he was a blood, claimed blood. They didn't recognize him. They said, no, nah, there aren't any white blood. No, nah, you, you can't hang with us. So he wasn't allowed to sit at their table. He wasn't allowed to hang with them. They, they did not recognize him. I don't know how that goes place to place, but at this particular place, that's how they did him, which was seemed kind of a shame because he seemed like he was a smart guy who could have added a lot of value to their organization if we're just being honest about it. Um, but he wasn't allowed to hang, so he just did his thing independently. He had uh, he had a ticket, a gambling ticket. He's in the mix with all kinds of stuff. Anyhow, um, Big Cam ended up in a four-man cell. I think he went to the hole for a, like maybe drinking or something like that at some point. He there were a few times when he got drunk that man he got slight and he'd be out there hollering, hooting, and acting wild. But as a leader, I do have to say, I saw various times where people had an issue with somebody. They came to him and he and he handled it. So even though he acted like a kid with certain parts, when it came down to business, the politics of it, I guess where he'd been at USP McCrary, it was built in him those type of things. So he ended up in the cell with Wood. Wood is the guy from coolest prison fight ever that I have, that is another video I did. And it was the coolest prison fight ever. Uh, only time I've ever seen somebody throw their crutches down and take off and break somebody's nose. Not advocating or glorifying. I mean, I lost my 20s of prison. It sucks. But, you know, it was just one of those incidents that you're just like, whoa, that just happened. Same guy, probably about 170 pounds, five foot nine, pretty fit. He ended up in the cell with them, and they cut up and stuff. People cut up, people roughhouse, people like, you know, try to wrestle, slam each other and everything. And that's that's just boys being boys, you know what I mean? Like, or men being men, whatever you want to say, boys are bad warm in prison, so I don't like using that word. But, you know, men being men, just, you get guys to get, it's, you're going, you're going roughhouse, you know what I mean? Either, either put them up, slap box, you know, wrist, stuff like that. That's just what's going to happen. That's what happened with them. They were playing around in the room. They'd been drinking, okay? They'd been drinking a good bit from what I heard. I didn't hear this story until after the fact and it, because I had a question and to Wood and it actually all came together and made sense. Um, they were playing around and I guess Big Cam slammed him off. So it got too rough, you know, people drink, you should never play when it comes to alcohol, no, do not play and drink. Even if you're free, do not play and drink. That's some of the worst stuff. Playing turns to real fighting when alcohol becomes involved more than I could ever begin to tell you in more situations than I can possibly count. Um, 
Also, talking about the coolest prison fight ever, Wood was actually under the influence um, on that too. So that's another note, you know, how that comes into play. Wood got aggravated, told Big Cam something about, I can't remember the exact wording of it. He said something that seemed mildly threatening towards him. He went to get go to, in his locker, probably just to get, I don't know what he was going to get. He wasn't planning on fighting him. Big Cam thought he was getting a lock, thought he was getting something. Well, Wood stood back up, started standing back up from his crouch position, and he threw that big windy haymaker uh, and clocked him right in the nose. And just like the other story I told before, uh, it, it broke his nose. Um, he didn't blow it, so it didn't, if you blow your nose when it's broken, your face just puffs up. He didn't blow it, but it did black both of his eyes. So Wood was stuck having to hide that because if they see any marks on you, they're going to run the cameras back and they're going to try to trace every footstep you took back until they can find at what point and where did you get that black eye. To low security, they couldn't do that. They didn't have any camera in any building at the low security. And surprisingly, I would say there were probably more fist fights at the low than at the medium. At the medium, there was a higher level of violence, but it was more common for fist fights at the low by far, I would have to say. And Big Cam immediately told him, Wood was like, what the, dude, why, why? And he's like, I can't believe I just did that. I'm so sorry. He was immediate. It was that reaction. Like I told you when I was playing with him, he went to swing and I, grabbed the hole and I laughed it off, you know, to de-escalate because I figured that's what it was, I guess, or man, I don't even know. It's just like one of those instinctive things. Um, something I found, you know, it, the little bit of training I had, uh, there were times before, I trained for two years. I was on bond for two years. I trained Kempo Cry four hours a day, six days a week. A lot of it was useless. Some of it was useful, but I got pretty good at ducking uh, sucker punches or winged haymakers uh, from doing that. You know, there was a couple times. Ghost's little uh, flunky millhouse, which I've told a story about in the past. That that was another one that I ducked. But uh, you know, you gotta watch out for those wild ones. Like you got those wild haymakers because they hit. Somebody swings it from the next county over. You know, you can see it coming. But if they connect with that, it's not gonna be good. So, wood had to walk around with sunglasses on for about the next ten days. You know, and. He couldn't go to the kitchen for a few days because you can't wear A lot of times the guards will tell you, take your sunglasses off, take your ball cap off, can't wear that in here. Just the rules. And he wore those sun. He, I think he borrowed somebody's prescription glasses too at some point. There's a number of people with those prescription tinted glasses. And he got by long enough. And I was actually asked, dude, what's, why are you wearing sunglasses all the time for? You're wearing them inside and everything. And that's when he told me the story about what had happened he ended up getting questioned about 10 or 11 days later and he's like man that's an old injury from basketball and where it was so long before and where you know it was already starting to fade and you can tell it was way old they let it go but he could have ended up in the hole if you have marks on your face regardless of whether you fought back or not or had anything you're going to go to the hole and you know if somebody gets back out of the hole after they get whooped quickly uh there, there's usually a reason. It's usually because they cooperate, because basically they put you in there like, you're either going to tell us who did it or you're going to sit in here. And they usually make people sit for about two or three weeks. Then they let them back out because they have to. Um, there was one guy, old man Bolt, the guy who I said lost over a dozen fights that I personally saw uh, that would fight anybody. He's missing an eye from losing a fight in the last prison. Um, he would do that over and over. He'd go tell them I failed. They'd be like, Bolt, you didn't fall. You've been fighting again. Who, who's you getting a fight with? No, 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 I'd fail. And he'd go to the hole for a little bit until he healed up. But anyway, um, that pretty much concludes this. For now, for the people who've been here for a minute, something to say. Uh, if you've donated, on the thing that I have to show who's donated, like I see and I usually pin it, thank you and everything, on my thing where I actually can see who's donated, like on the studio part of things, those don't even show up. I don't see them unless I actually see them there. Only one person's has shown up in that in the section. I still it's still going on. I'm not saying nothing like that, but like what I'm saying is 
I think I think that some people are donating and I'm not knowing it and I'm not able to thank you. So let me know. Don't have pride and be like, oh, I didn't do it for recognition. I, let me thank you. I mean, let me thank you. I want to know to thank you for doing that. I mean, I really appreciate it. And I never ask anybody to donate anything. I had a couple people ask me put like a cash app or Venmo up, and I don't I don't know how I feel about you know doing that. You know, the only thing that I ask of anybody is just. If you watch the video and you comment and you like it, if you like it, press the like button. You know, that's all I need from anybody. I want to do this the right way. I want to build this by y'all liking what I'm doing and by commenting and liking, you're helping build this, you know. Um, and I do appreciate and I will thank anybody, but just please let me know because I really feel like there's somebody that I'm forgetting. And something else that I wanted to bring up that's really... Something I've been thinking on. Clarence Eugene Robinson, the baddest man I ever met in prison. I was getting ready to gather some stuff to do a story on him of his life events through news articles and stuff like that. And through doing that, you know, if you guys like how I tell stories, I'm a nerd for like a lot of the stories of how these gangs and stuff came about. Now, I've got tons of stories of what I was personally related in, you know, what I was personally involved in, and the person, the people that I knew, like Eugene Robinson and Caribbean drug lord Sean Penn Tardu at a 500 kilo case. Um, but there's other stories too outside of that when it comes to this stuff. I research really thoroughly, and I could tell some pretty interesting stories about some of this stuff if you guys think that would be something that you'd like please let me know about that if you think i should just stick to what i know and stick to what i went through i won't have my feelings hurt but i think that i could do a pretty good job of gathering some really cool information and telling a story about something in the way that i tell it i'm really a stickler for details some people have complained about that because i've explained too much how the place looked how it every oh everything's good just gotta press this button okay but how it looked and everything else like if i'm on the phone with somebody and something's lost and i explain to it i can explain down to a pinpoint where it's at not everybody can do that um some people i'm not going to name people in my, in my family but they i'll ask them where something's at if i'm somewhere and i i they give the most vague things like I am a stickler for the details just on every little thing about that and I think that I could do a pretty good job at it if it's something but I've been second guessing myself on it but you know whether it be like origins the Aryan Brotherhood or up-to-date stuff that's going on um, and other you know Mexican Mafia stuff stuff like that uh, I think I could do a pretty good job of that if you guys think that that's something that you would like to hear from me if you think that I can do that and do a good enough job at it that you would like and listen it to it um, I can do the research and I will tell a very very thorough story in a way that I think would be better than you know hearing it on other places because I'm gonna take what each one missed and try to put it all together so you know just let me know if that's something you know you guys think would be cool if you've watched this far and you've liked it, <laughs> if you liked it and you think I earned it, press the like button. But if not, that is 23 minutes and 18 seconds of your life in which you'll never, ever get back. And for that, I am truly, truly sorry. But I really do hope you like this video. You guys have a good one.